Hello, art parents. All right, so for December, we have a really great artist, Paolo Uccello, um, born in the late 1300s, working through the 1400s. Um, so he was really kind of a forerunner of the Renaissance, one of those, he kind of bridged that gap from early earlier Christian art into the Renaissance. And really interestingly, that earlier Christian art was very two-dimensional and flat, and um, the perspective was used to show importance, not to look realistic. So um, the more important the person was, the bigger they'd be. So like, for example, there are a lot of really, um, really great paintings of like the baby Jesus, the adoration of the baby Jesus. And here Mary is holding this baby that's, you know, really big on her lap because he is the most important person in this picture. And then you've got Mary who's a bit smaller. And then you've got like maybe the Magi or, you know, some apostles or whatever. And they're smaller still because the artist is trying to show you that number one in that picture is the baby Jesus. Um, so Uccello was a mathematician. He was a scientist, which was really common in the Renaissance, right? I'm really common in that time period to have um, artists that were also scientists, which I love. I think that's very cool. And he was just fascinated with perspective and with vanishing points. There's um, there's documentation. One of his contemporaries writes about how he, he was known to stay up all night just like looking at a scene and trying to figure out the exact vanishing point of that country scene or whatever. Um, really, I, that's kind of amazing, right? Um, I love this. So um, obviously because he was born so long ago, we have a lot less information. We also have fewer pictures of himself, but this is a fresco that he painted with some of his contemporaries that he um, that he really admired or identified with. And what a great picture! So I wanted to include the whole um, the whole piece, but I grayed out everybody else so you know that for sure this is Paolo Uccello. Um, he also it's also labeled under there, which is pretty cool. Um, so he had these very detailed, very meticulous, almost like draftsman-like um, pictures, and there's a lot going on. He really wanted to tell a story. He, um, he apprenticed under Giberti, which he was more of a sculptor, but also a painter, and um, super detailed, really beautiful work. You think of those um, Florence Baptistry doors that we studied a couple years ago, where each section told a story from the Bible. And um, it's kind of a similar, you know, kind of a similar thing. He's got these really detailed, meticulous pictures with tons and tons of figures, tons of action. And in here, we can tell what's going on, not who's important, not necessarily this is the most important guy in the picture, but that he's closest to the viewer. And we can tell he's closest because we can see all of his details. We can see all of the details, the pink cheeks, the really pretty tapestry and the armor. Whereas these guys that are further back, we really don't see very much detail at all. I mean, there's still detail because it's really a, a detailed painting, but not nearly as much, right? And that is one of the tricks that Uccello employed to show perspective. Um, also, you'll notice that anything that's square, all of the lines are going to kind of run back, but start to run together at some point. And in a room like this, it's walled off before you're going to hit that vanishing point. But in a scene like this one, we do go all the way back um, into the countryside. So you can see the horizon line, and I tell students the horizon, sky, the horizon line is where the sky meets the ground, but sometimes this gets a little tricky because we've got mountains and hills, and so sometimes artists choose to um, make that horizon line lower than the mountains and hills, and that's okay, it's all right, we can still work with that. Um, the thing is, when you're creating your own picture, you get to choose where your horizon line is. So with Uccello, we, um, I just followed the lines back to find where his horizon line was um, and where his vanishing point was. But because we have that vanishing point, all of these square things in our picture are all going to line up and go clear, clear back to this little point back here in the countryside. And with this picture, 
I took one and just threw some lines on it so you could see. So here is our horizon line back there in the country. Here's our vanishing point. And look at how I can make these straight lines that are all going back to that point. Or if you want to think of it this way, radiating out from that point to where the viewer is, to outside of the frame of the picture. And look how the steps line up beautifully. The molding on the um, like cornice piece lines up. Now the people aren't really going to fit in these lines because people aren't square. They don't have square. Um, they don't have square angles. So they're just they're doing their thing. But the people that are up close here, we see a lot of detail. Whereas these houses that are back in here, we see hardly any detail. They're so far away. These trees, we can tell where they're placed in the picture because of how big and how detailed they are. So this one up in the front, we see the leaves kind of coming off the edge. It's very big. Whereas this one that's a little bit, it's like halfway back, we're gonna see a lot less. And then this, these back here, way back in the mountains that are following the roads along here, they're, they're just little blobs of paint. We hardly see them at all. Now, with the younger kids, um, second grade and below, I don't know, you use your judgment on those second graders and even on the third graders, use your judgment. If you're feeling like it's just not coming together or your teacher says, you know, really I only have half an hour, 45 minutes for this, um, then just talk about that sizing and how we make things bigger and more detailed and then smaller and less detailed as they get far away. And that's really enough for them to get going. Um, but with your students that um, are a little bit older or have a little bit more of an attention span, go ahead and really encourage them to put something in that can follow these vanishing, um, follow these lines back to the vanishing point. So I have here, let's see, my computer went to sleep so I had to start again. Yay! Um, okay, so here I have my blank paper for you. And I'm gonna create my horizon line and I'm gonna kind of put it back here. I'm gonna give it some rolling hills, but nothing, nothing super crazy because I don't know, I don't feel like it. Um, and then I'm gonna say my vanishing point is right back here. I'm gonna pick this point. Now tell the students, we don't wanna make our vanishing point or our horizon line um, or these lines that go back to the vanishing point we want to make those so light. You want to barely be able to see them. Why? Because we're going to erase them. Nobody wants to see a dark point back in the back of your background. That's not going to add anything. And the chalk will kind of skip over those lines in the paper as well. So, you know, be careful with that. And I'm thinking, how about, um, oh, it would be kind of fun to make a, um, a gingerbread house for Christmas. Okay, so we'll make the gingerbread witch's house. I'm going to give it a fun kind of curvy peak. And here are its walls coming down. Okay, now here is the awesome trick. Sorry, you can probably barely see this. Um, so you see, I've got my house just lightly sketched in. I'm not stressing out too much about the details yet. Now I'm gonna go back to my vanishing point and I'm just gonna line up the ruler here. And, oh. and go from the top of the roof to the sides of the house. Oh, I should have made this vanishing point a little further away. Um, you know what, let me just really quick, for the sake of, it really doesn't matter, it'll work anywhere you place it, but for the sake of demonstration, it will be easier if I make my vanishing point further away. So I'm gonna make my vanishing point back here. Um, okay, so let's, Let's start again. It can be anywhere on the paper. It will work no matter what. But this will just, that'll give a little bit more of a moderate view instead of a very forced perspective. Okay. So I'm just drawing that line super lightly all the way back to the vanishing point. And again to the edge of the roof. And now down to the edge of the house. Okay, so now I've got these lines. Now I can decide if I want a super, super long house, maybe it's like an apartment complex and I want it to be super long, I can put the roof anywhere back here and I just wanna keep these lines parallel to these lines. So you'll notice I curved the roof because this line of the roof was curved. 
And then I'm going to curve this just a little bit down there. And look at that. I have a very nice three-dimensional, super huge gingerbread apartment house. And if I want to make it just a little house, I can go a lot closer, curve back, curve down, and there you see it's all lined up nicely. Now if I wanted to just have a straight street going back this way, I can decide that too and I can leave a little space and then I can put another house in there and I can change things up on this house. So see how I would, oh, that's not quite right, but there we go. So, so see how I've got an edge here. Now I've got two houses in a row, right? And I know that all of my, um, my three dimensional, my perspective is going to look nice and neat because I've made these lines. Do the houses have to line up? No, absolutely not. I can put one further out right here. And I'm making it a little bit smaller because um, it's further away. But you notice this one looks a little bit smaller too. It looks longer. I made it longer than this one. But you see the face of this house is smaller than the face of this house because I made it further away and those lines help you to do that really nicely. So then I can just draw new lines back to the points and I know right where to put my roof to make that house show up as well, right? Okay, and then I can go in with my colored pencils and put in all my candy and my details, whatever I want here. I'm gonna put in some trees, but I can use our chalks you can use it on the side to give a nice big um, filled in like light wash almost section and you can blend it with your fingers. And then you can also add in little details here and there um, with the chalk. It looks really beautiful and it can kind of blend in. Um, so, you know, use this. It's kind of fun. It's kind of fun to mix the chalk with the colored pencil because the colored pencil will give you control, but the chalk just gives you a different feel. It's got a really kind of filmy, pretty quality to it. And then when your student is finished and they like what they have, there is some awesome smelly aerosol hairspray up on the cart that you can spray their picture for them so that it, um, so that it won't, um, smudge because the chalk does smudge around but look at how fun that is to kind of mix the colors together and get some different texture um, so it's a fun fun project fun to work with the chalks I have watercolor paper out because it's got a little bit more tooth so please still I hate to I really hate to say that but just you know just be aware of um, what you're using don't use a ton, a ton with the students. Um, we, you know, there are always like one or two kids that just like seem to need to go through five pieces of paper. And that's totally great and fine when we're using cardstock, but these are close to a dollar a sheet. So we want to just, we want to just be, you know, a little bit more mellow about it. At the same time, if you have a kid who's super stressed about it, don't make them cry over it. It's certainly not worth it. There are extras on the cart, um, just not a ton of extras. So <laughs> if we need to, we will order more. Um, if you have any questions or need anything at all, don't hesitate to let me know. And don't forget to schedule your lesson early since our month is a short one, this one. Um, have a great time. Thanks so much.